Okay. All right. Uh, future, 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 man. So future just dropped a new track, and it, he's on another Narda Witch song, and the Narda Witch song is actually called Back to Back. However, people believe that he's dissing Drake on the song Back to Back. Why? Because these lyrics. He says, "Ain't gonna be no nigga who diss you." I'm spinning back to back. Now, obviously. We know he's in this, I guess he's in a feud with Drake because people lump him in Metro to say, y'all created an album called We Don't Trust You and We Still Don't Trust You, and that seems to be going at Drake. Also, Kanye snitched on the whole operation by saying, yo, Future invited me to the studio and told me to diss this nigga, which now makes it seem like Future was orchestrating this hater squad or Avenger squad too. So when he drops a song, even though it probably was recorded at a different time, maybe it had nothing to do with him. But because of the name of the song, Drake had a famous famous song called Back to Back. And then you hear the lyrics saying, ain't going to be no nigga who diss you. I'm spinning back to back. And then you you, you know what? I want to add this to the conversation of, of possibly future. Not possibly. Definitely future at this point. And everybody going bad on, on Drake. But specifically future. I think there was a time where most artists felt like drake was at this pop level that was like god tier above where any rapper could reach and because of that you always needed him because he could get your song from local popping in the strip club to pop status you get what i mean that's one of the reasons of the drake stimulus package some way, somehow, and maybe it's because of their own individual success. I think these guys lost that plot, especially Future. I'm sticking with Future on this one. If Future had songs with Drake like, you know, um, Life is Good or uh, uh, what other songs? They did a whole album together, and those songs did really well. For Future to do this move, I got to think that Future is like, yo, my last album or my last two albums at over 200,000. Yo, I'm that nigga now. I don't really need Drake. Because that you have to realize, in my opinion of what, and this is just my theory. You can tell me if your theory is different. In my theory of what's happened, in my theory of what's happened, the majority of um the majority of artists have felt this way about Drake, but have not actually pulled the trigger. Right. So they haven't, you know, for whatever reason, they're like, yo, uh, we don't really like him or we thought he did this to us or or we feel this way about him. But like, shit, we might need him. Drake literally has a line that says they hate me. No, they need me more than they hate me. L literally a classic bar. They need me more than they hate me. And I guess that's the point what I'm trying to say. Are we at the point where people like Future is saying, nigga, we don't need you. Right. Like, you know, I think that I think this album was almost a big fuck you to Drake to say, bro, we don't need you no more. We could go number one without you. We could do this without you. We don't need you. And a lot of times. You know, they always say, if you can't be used, you're useless. And. I'm wondering if that's part of the part of how these artists are thinking about it, that they just don't need Drake anymore. Yeah, you're gonna always sell like four hundred, five hundred thousand, but it's cool. We'll sell we'll sell our two hundred thousand and we the streets. I think that's kind of probably playing into it a little bit, chat. Y'all tell me what y'all think. I really do think these artists are like, we don't need this nigga no more. Somebody says they need him. Nah, I don't think bro, I Again, I'm not, I'm talking about how they're probably feeling. The Weeknd never felt like he needed Drake, right? Especially at this point, right? Metro probably felt like he didn't need Drake already because he had a Drake feature and he didn't put Drake on the song. Like, we got to start looking at context clues. Metro had a Drake feature for Trance. Bro, nobody would turn that down. He turned it down. Future at this point, I'm thinking Future's probably feeling the same. Like, bro, we don't need you, nigga. Yo, I'm Future. At the end of the day, I'm Future. Yeah, I'm not you, but I'm me, and I don't need you. So I don't got to deal with your bullshit anymore. And it's one of those things where, like, sometimes 
you know, a nigga full of bullshit and you got to tolerate it because you need them until you don't need them no more. Women do this all the time. A woman might go in a relationship with a guy, right? I, I, I used to say this about, I think I said this one time about, um, what do you call it again? Um, it was Joel Santana and his girl because his girl started um, loving hip hop. And also I said about um, um, Erica Mena too. I said a lot of these girls are getting with dudes because of fame and money. And then they let these girls go on loving hip hop and they themselves get what they were with you for. And afterwards, they don't see any value in you. That's it. It is what it is. If a girl got with you for f because you're famous and because you got bread and then she gets famous and gets bread, she don't need your ass no more. It's over. You get what I'm saying? So, uh, again, you know, a, a lot of times people's relationships sometimes is transactional or or dependent on A, B, or C. What I'm saying is that Future at this point just don't necessarily need Drake to get a number one song or a number one album. I mean, granted, does he need to go to war with, with Drake? No. Which I think that's, the, the you know, even if you weren't cool with Drake, you know, like, they haven't worked together too much other than, you know, obviously the, the, the big collab, which was, you know, I'm away for you. But still, why go to war with Drake? But I do believe these artists are kind of feeling like, bro, they're not looking at Drake like how niggas are looking at Taylor Swift. You do know 2013, right? Like, let's say 20, uh, let's say 2014 to 2018, 2014 to 2018, or let's say 2019. Drake was basically looked at how everybody looking at Taylor Swift. Did you just see Taylor Swift? Just look at this shit right here. Look at this shit right here. Taylor Swift literally sold 2.6 million records first week. Like, bro, this is fucking disgusting. This is disgusting. This is disgusting. To put this in perspective, there's only one album or two albums that ever sold more than that. I think one. Adele sold three million. Yes. I know. It's crazy. Adele 25, that album. Adele 25. Oh, sorry. First week sales. I think it sold three. Yeah, 3.8 million. 3.38 <laughs> million. And then actually... Like, look, albums with most first week sales. I think there's In Sync. In Sync sold two million like twice. Here we go. Let's go to the U.S. Yes. So this did three point three eight. Then this did two point six, which is Taylor Swift. See, Taylor Swift got the second highest selling album of all time, and then there's two. And sync albums, 2.4 and 1.8. Then Marshall Mathers LP, 1.7. Backstreet Boys. They, yo, you could tell the industry was eaten during that time of boy bands. Because boy bands used to got used to get people to like, like spend wild amount of money and really like support these people. What was that other group that was kind of popping? I thought they did some good sales too. There was this other group that, that had, um, what's that other group called? There was another group. It was more recent. And they broke up. They broke up. But, like, they're still doing, they're still doing, like, um, we're not talking about a black group. Like, what's the name of the group? No. One Direction. I thought, yeah, One Direction. I thought they were doing some crazy numbers. But they're not on this list, surprisingly. Surprisingly. Okay. So we get two in sync albums. We get Eminem, Backstreet Boys, Eminem again. Eminem was dominating this shit. 1.5. God damn. Then 1989, Taylor's version. Right? Eminem show. God damn, Eminem was going crazy. Britney Spears. Then Taylor with three albums. Look. Look how much albums Taylor got on, on this top 22 list. Look. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven. She has seven albums out of the, the top 22 most selling albums of all time. Yo, 
she sold 1.2 million in 2012. Jesus Christ, Taylor's fucking popular. God damn. She sold a million in 2010? No, this is ridiculous. Not Taylor Swift is something else, bro. I, I, I really... Now, granted, I'll tell you this. From the 2.6 million... You want to hear a crazy stat? You remember when Nav sold, like, he sold, like, 100,000? And people were like, yo, 80% of those were, like, him selling T-shirts? Well, out of the 2.6 million that Taylor Swift just sold, 600,000 came from just streaming, okay? 2 million came from her selling vinyls and selling actual product. Like, now, she's not selling shirts. And, you know, there's some packaging, but it's not really, like, shirts. She's selling the actual fucking record. Vinyls, different colored vinyls, CDs. Like, she's still selling actual product, but the product happens to be music. For whatever reason, her fans just buys their buys her music. Somebody says, 8 CD... Uh, Iceberg says eight different CD covers with a poster. Yeah, it'd be like that. It'd be like that. Man, she's, yo, she is ridiculous, man. Didn't Adele drop another album after this? What was Adele's album after that? Adele. I can't believe she sold three million one time. Uh, what's, what's the uh, other album? I know she had another album. Oh, yeah, she dropped something called 30. How much did that do first week? Um, uh, commercials. Uh, oh, wow. It only sold 261,000 copies? Huh? Wait. No, no, no. Never mind. Never mind. Here it is. It sold 839. Damn. Yeah, that's a big drop off. She went from selling 3.38 million six years before. Well, I guess she didn't drop in six years. Yeah, you, you, you can't not drop in six years. And she had some of the biggest songs in the shit, right? Right. When she dropped this album, this album's still my shit, man. I was rolling in the deep. Oh, that's my shit. I ain't gonna lie to you. That wasn't on this album? Oh, nah. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello's on this, this album. I thought Rolling in the Deep was on there, too. Huh? Oh, no, I think Rolling in the Deep was on the album before. She, Because she dropped an album called 21, too. Yeah, she dropped an album called 21. Right? Or am I tripping? Yeah, yeah, she did. It was in 21. I thought this shit sold like crazy. Yeah, Rolling in the Deep is on this one. First week. How much did this sell first week? Critical commercial. Okay, here we go. It debuted. Okay. Ju Juvenile sold 5 million records. Well, nigga, that's forever ago, bro. Okay. All right. All right then. All righty then. What are we doing?